tornado close calls always enjoy checking out these tornado videos before we do get into this appreciate if you guys can add subscribe button let's see what we got when a tornado drops from the sky it's never a good situation yeah, look at that i mean technically if it's out in the middle of like a field and no one gets hurt that's actually an amazing situation because right, it's beautiful tornadoes are so beautiful right but 99% of the time... You know what? That's the thing with tornadoes, man. That They actually look so cool, but the fact that they do so much damage is so bad. The bad situation. Right. People lose lives. Property is destroyed. Not good. Towns wow. and cities are destroyed. It's not good. But there have been many tornado situations that could have been a lot worse. And that's what we're talking about in today's video on tornado close calls. Okay. From a tornado dropping less than a mile away from a stadium of 50,000 people to a tornado heading towards a traffic jam. Those are just a few of the six oh, tornado man. close calls that we are talking about today. Yeah, oh. that's the thing. You know, like, America gets so many tornadoes, but America's so big, so don't a lot of tornadoes do actually just hit in the middle of nowhere right which is good because that we're not doing damage but yo what about these situations where it's very close to a lot a lot of people and we're starting off with number six tornado versus nuclear power plant oh my god oh my god wait what would happen now, two things that definitely do not mix are nuclear power plants and tornadoes and on wednesday june 24th 1998 that very thing happened when an f2 tornado struck the davis bessie nuclear power station in oak harbor ohio some oh. 25 miles east of toledo the funnel cloud was spotted by several workers near the cooling tower just before it struck the damage was pretty minimal however the switch yard of the plant was destroyed and access to outside power was completely cut off at 8 42. This oh, resulted wow. in the reactor of the plant automatically shutting down. At 9.18 p.m., a low-level alert was issued. Until external power could be restored, the plant's emergency diesel generators kept vital facility safety systems running. Fortunately, external Jesus. power was quickly restored and a nuclear catastrophe was avoided. At wait, 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 wait. What's that worst-case scenario? Like, could it make it go boom? After the incident, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission sent a team of experts for an inspection. This was an F2 tornado believed to be about 100 yards wide with winds around 130 miles per hour. Damn. It does make one wonder, what if the tornado was an F3 or an F5? Yeah. What if an F5 tornado that was a mile wide destroyed the backup diesel generators? It's pretty terrifying when you think about it. You know, this scenario would make a great disaster movie. Oh wait, this is the exact plot of the 2002 made-for-TV movie, Atomic Twister. Oh, yeah, really? I watched Atomic Twister. Not, not seen it. the uh, best movie ever made. In fact, it was uh, kind of cheesy, pretty bad. The Transformer just got hit by a tornado. And Stu's dead. But it does make one wonder, what would have happened if a larger and more powerful tornado... Yeah, I am curious. Like, obviously, I don't want it to happen, but I'm very curious to see, like, what actually would... ...hit a nuclear power plant. Oh, and by the way, Ohio has had some pretty powerful tornadoes in the past. Wow. Wait a second. <sighs> okay, that's good. That's good. Wait. Oh no. Wait, wait, what does that say? Oh no. Nuclear reactor closest to the twisters cited for safety flaws. We're moving on to number five, the 2008 Georgia Dome basketball incident. This may have been the most important basketball shot ever made. Okay. During the second round of the SEC Conference Basketball Tournament in 2008, Mississippi State was leading Alabama by three points. However, in the last seconds of the game, Alabama player Mikhail Riley scored a three-pointer, which tied the game and sent it into overtime. During overtime play, an F2 tornado would hit downtown Atlanta, including the arena where the game was taking place, the Georgia Dome. The exact moment when the tornado hit was with 2 minutes and 11 seconds left in overtime. The moment was captured live on TV. Oh, damn. Yo, if that like teared through that and was powerful, that would have been so bad. 
the players scrambled into the locker room as bits of debris fell from the ceiling, and the rafters could clearly be seen swinging from the roof. The tornado passed without further incident. Oh, However, wow. if Mikhail Riley hadn't made that three-pointer and sent it into overtime, things could have been a lot worse. This would have resulted in the game being completed shortly before the tornado hit, which would have likely resulted in thousands of people exiting the Georgia Dome on the way to their cars at the exact moment of the tornado. They would have been completely unprotected, and it's likely many would have lost their lives. I mean, holy yo, this is like the butterfly effect, bro. I actually didn't think about it that way. I was thinking, why is it the most important shot? That made it go into overtime. Oh, no. Yo. Get some of the damage in downtown Atlanta. You would not yo. want to be outside in this. Thankfully, Mikkel Riley did make that three-pointer, and it was fortunately just another tornado close call. Oh, wow. That shot literally saved lives. That shot genuinely saved lives. And before we get to number four, a quick word from our sponsor, Morgan & Morgan. Mad. It's crazy oh, to think stuff like that, bro, isn't it? Thanks, Morgan & Morgan. Like butterfly effect. Number four, tornadoes versus schools. Oh, look at that, bro. Look Many of us that. in the Midwest remember doing tornado drills in the hallways during our school days. Already Usually it was that. just a fun time where we got a break from the mundane classroom activities. Okay. However, these drills serve as an important exercise as tornadoes have a long history of hitting schools. And there are two close call tornado school disasters I want to talk about. Wait, what do you mean? Why is saying tornadoes got a long history of hitting schools? Like, it, tar it genuinely targets the school. Like the tornadoes can communicate and like, you know what, I'm going to hit this school. First off, let's talk about the 1990 Plainfield, Illinois F5 tornado. At around 3.30 p.m., an F5 tornado struck the Plainfield High School, completely destroying oh portions of it. Briefly oh my God. before the tornado hit, the football team quickly ran inside and took shelter in a hallway. Meanwhile, dozens of volleyball players in the gym heard an alarm hit by the dean in the office to take shelter. They, too, rushed into the same hallway as the football players. Right as the last student exited the gym, the tornado completely completely destroyed the gym. In fact, the only portion of the entire school that survived was the hallway that the students were taking shelter in. What oh my if God. the dean hadn't hit the alarm? What if the tornado had hit an hour earlier when school was still in session? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I like, is that hallway designed to like withstand tornadoes? Why is that the only part that like actually, it must be right, must be. That's like the safety part of the, the school. Because their routine was to all get into this hallway. And it's the only part that's actually, they want damage. Dean hadn't hit the alarm. What if the tornado had hit an hour earlier when school was still in session? Unfortunately, three faculty members in the school would Damn. lose their lives. But the situation could have been much worse. The second close call school disaster I want to mention is Joplin. The 2011 Joplin EF5 oh, tornado Joplin. was the worst U.S. tornado disaster since the 50s, resulting in 158 fatalities. Two schools were completely destroyed by that. this tornado. Joplin High School and Joplin Middle School. The security footage is well known and has been seen millions of times. Thankfully, no one was in either of these schools at the time, as it was a Sunday and the graduation ceremony had already finished. But what if it had happened during the school week? Wow. What if it was earlier in the year? The Joplin tornado was a tragic natural disaster and obviously it wasn't a close call. It was a direct hit of a major populated area. But thank Bro, look at that, man. That is crazy. You don't play around with Mother Nature. It was a direct hit of a That's major crazy. populated area. But thankfully, there were many miracles from that day that saved hundreds of lives. And it's still good to remember those miracles as well. Number three, tornado versus cyclones. Okay. There is a D1 university in Ames, Iowa, known as Iowa State. And their athletic teams are known as the Cyclones. They're literally named after tornadoes. Okay. Fact, they actually got that nickname in 1895 after they defeated Northwestern in a football match. A Chicago tribute. Yeah, I thought he was going to say after they defeated a tornado, I was going to say how. His headline read, struck by a cyclone. If you're a big tornado fan like me, then I think you'd really enjoy the Iowa State Cyclones football intro. It's actually pretty sweet. <laughs> Okay, it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's got the sounds and everything. Although, I feel like if you're a big Oklahoma fan and the Iowa State Cyclones come showing up, it's like, really? 
we get way more tornadoes than you guys. Anyway, ironically <laughs> enough, on November 12th, 2005, an F2 tornado came within only a mile of their football stadium, Jack Trice. This was while 50,000 people were gathered for a football game. Iowa State was getting ready to face uh. off at number 22, Colorado, when the stadium had to be evacuated as the tornado sirens went off. Just northwest of the stadium, an F2 tornado- Yo, that might be a little bit trippy because some people there might be thinking that the tornado sirens is just like the psycho siren or something. They're, they're like they're just playing an intro lowered from the clouds thankfully this occurred to the northwest of the stadium iowa state spokesman john mccarroll said we dodged a bullet with the track of that storm and Damn. there's actually footage of this tornado that was captured on the iowa state campus so it truly wasn't that far away this was all part of a rare mid-November tornado outbreak that hit central Iowa. The largest of these tornadoes was an F3 that hit the community of Woodward. Think if that F3 would have hit the stadium. I mean, an F2 would have been bad, an F3 would have been a disaster, and anything more would have probably killed thousands of people. There are Mad. actually a lot of stadiums that are in tornado-prone. Wait, what is this? There are why does this look like a very skinny tornado? Is, is that what it actually is? Actually, a lot of stadiums that are in tornado-prone areas. Think of the SEC. I mean, Alabama, Tuscaloosa, a tornado came this close to their stadium. Kind of scary. Number two, oh, wow. the 1995 Texas prison tornado close call. On June 8, 1995, a tornado outbreak occurred over the Texas Panhandle, resulting in 30 tornadoes. A few of these tornadoes are quite notable. One F4 struck the western side of Pampa, Texas, and destroyed over 250 businesses and homes. The tornado was well documented, and several videos can easily be found on YouTube. Mod. Another F4 tornado that struck near Kellerville was initially rated an F5. However, it was later downgraded after further surveying. And while I could do a whole video on this outbreak, Today, we are only talking about a specific F2 tornado that dropped down just northeast of Pampa. This particular tornado thankfully took zero lives and stayed out in open country. However, okay. it came very, very close to hitting the Jordan Unit prison. The close call was captured by Martin Lysias, and a video can be seen here on YouTube. Yo, it looks like, bro, if that's an actual real photo, it looks like it's gone straight over it. Now, don't let the F2 rating fool you. The only reason why this tornado had such a low rating was due to the lack of damage available for surveying. It's likely that if this tornado hit buildings and caused damage, it would have been rated an F4 or higher. Fortunately, prisons by nature are oh, wow. high security buildings typically made with strong materials, such okay. as steel and concrete. However, that doesn't mean tornadoes haven't damaged prisons in the past. In fact, just recently during the March 3rd, 2020 Nashville EF3 tornado, the historic Tennessee State Prison took heavy damage. Oh, this wow. is the same same prison where the Green Mile was filmed. Dead man! Dead man walking! We got a dead man walking here! Fortunately, this prison has officially been closed since 1992. You know what? Don't go crazy at me, but I've actually never seen the Green Mile. I know. I know. I know a lot of people ask me if I've seen it. I actually have it, dude. So no inmates were present at the time. A couple weeks later on March 18th, a weaker F2 tornado hit two prisons in Albaline, Texas. Prisons, like schools, have very large footprints, and this makes them big targets for right. tornadoes. Okay, fair enough. And the number one... Oh, that's why tornadoes hit schools a lot, because it's very big. Uh, that makes sense. Not because they want to target them, but because they're okay. Close call on our list. The massive 2013 El Reno tornado. Man, this that particular huge. tornado, I'm sure many of you are very familiar with. It is notable for being one of the largest, if not the largest, tornadoes ever recorded. This massive monster was 2.6 miles wide and also what? featured wind speeds of 296 miles per hour, making it arguably not only the largest tornado of all time, but also the most powerful tornado of all time. Oh, wow. It formed on May 31st, 2013, just west of El Reno, Oklahoma. Its path initially went southeast before rotating north and dissipating. And look, you can even see the tornado scar from space. You might be wondering, okay, Jake, how is this even a close call? Well, fortunately, this massive tornado occurred over. And it was cl a close call for El Reno. Because if it went over this, it would have destroyed a lot. Because I'm, see I'm seeing neighborhoods here. Or open country and only managed to destroy a few buildings. Okay. This is the reason why it was given an EF3 rating. There just wasn't enough destruction to rate it higher. Okay, now let's zoom out. Here's the path of the tornado. 
And here is Oklahoma City, a oh, wow. major metropolitan area with a population of 700,000. So you have the largest and most powerful tornado Imagine. ever recorded, dodging not only El Reno, which would have been also a disaster, yeah, that would have been but bad. also a densely populated city. Look how close these homes... You know what? It's a close call for a lot. I ain't gonna lie. Because I'm seeing Union City right here. I'm guessing there's neighborhoods here, smaller. You got El Reno right here, and it went right in the middle of them. And obviously dodged a big... Oh, imagine like it was over this. Bro, that would have been brutal. It's the biggest and one of the most powerful. Bro, that would have been crazy. So disaster, but also a densely populated city. Look how close these homes are together. Oh, wow. Yeah, nah, mad. This is how wide 2.6 miles is. A 2.6 mile wide tornado with 300 mile per hour winds going through this city would have killed thousands of people. Oh, wow. On top of that, this tornado occurred during rush hour. So there's literally traffic jams throughout the city. And in case you are unaware, cars and tornadoes don't mix. Unfortunately, right. there were still eight fatalities, including three professional storm chasers, the Twist X team, as well as one amateur storm chaser. This tornado was so large that many- That's crazy, isn't it? The people that will be chasing these storms, the professionals, like they kind of know what to do. Well, you would think so, yeah? And they're getting killed by it. Mad. Storm chasers didn't realize they were literally inside of it. And while four would lose their lives, many wow. others would suffer major injuries. That's crazy. Well, there you have it. Good job those tornadoes was actually close calls because they could have caused some proper, proper damage. I actually enjoyed checking out tornadoes. They are beautiful, really cool. Obviously, the devastating part is not cool, right? Really interesting video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. Live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys want to check me out over there, I do live reacts over there. So make sure you do go check that out. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.